Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the SJASU ACES Student Chapters Student Workshop. Uh, we had a few of these last semester, and, and this is the first one we're having this semester. Um, normally, our chair, Sarah Emerson, does the um, introduces the chapter at the beginning. However, uh, Sarah is not feeling well with a cold, so I'm going to be doing this part as well as introducing our speaker. My name is uh, Frank Florian, and I'm the program director for the uh, ACES student chapter here at San Jose State. Our program tonight is a student workshop, the fourth in a series, which features SJSU SLIS graduate students who are also members of the SJSU ACES student chapter presenting on skills or knowledge with which they have practical experience. Tonight's presentation will last approximately 30 to 60 minutes, including time provided for Q&A session after the presentation. The session is being recorded, so you can go back and listen to it later again, or you can um, let your friends know about it who weren't able to attend, and they can go view the recording to um, see what was covered during the workshop. Um, on a logistical note, uh, during the presentation, Margaret has said she will be open to uh, taking questions from folks. Um, you can type those into the chat window. If you have a really burning question that is um, relevant to what she's covering uh, wh wherever she's at in her presentation, you can also raise your hand. And, if, uh, and when Margaret acknowledges you, then you can ask, ask the question during the session. Uh, if she doesn't get your question during the presentation, uh, we'll be keeping an eye on the chat. There will be a Q&A session at the end, and we'll make sure that your question gets addressed at the end if it doesn't get addressed during the presentation. So let me briefly introduce our speaker and then hand the mic over to Margaret. So Margaret is completing uh, the SLIS program here this semester. She's uh, diligently working on her ePortfolio, which I know about because I am also working on my ePortfolio this semester, which means uh, that we're both going to be graduating in May. Margaret has uh, worked in academic libraries since 1992 with interests in copyright fair use, open access publishing, digitization, distance, distance learning, and technology. She currently works as the Course Reserves Coordinator at Cal State University Channel Islands. Um, and some of you may also know her as a peer mentor for Library 203, which she is doing this semester. So without further ado, please join me in giving a warm welcome and round of applause to our presenter tonight, Margaret Driscoll. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to show you a little picture there, but I'd like to actually show you that I'm here. There's a person behind the voice. Um, like I said, I love this web conferencing capability that STSU SLIS gives to us so that we can get together and kind of get to know each other, even though we're very, very distributed and all over the country and sometimes the world. So what I'd like to do today, I'm going to turn off my video so that we don't have um, a lot of bandwidth problems. And I want to tell you that I want to talk to you about uh, Zotero. It's an amazing free citation management tool. And it's available for you to use on any computer that you want to use. And I've used it for about a year, absolutely adore it. Not only can it manage your citations, it can help you put together your reference list for your papers. So the first thing we all know, because we're in library school, is that research is a process. It doesn't happen just at one time with one search and you find everything. You have to do a lot of gathering and going back and forth and evaluating what you find, select from that. Maybe your topic expands a little bit or changes, so then you go back and you do some more searching. And the whole time you're synthesizing it with what you already know about the topic. And so it's, it's a, 
ongoing process. It's not just a one-time shot. So getting that all organized can be um, an interesting process as well. So often people run into this kind of a situation. There's so much information, you don't know what you've got, what to do with it, um, how to access it even, much less how to put it together into a paper, cite it properly, and, and have a decent uh, reference list at the end of your program. So here comes Zotero. There are other, web, um, other citation management tools like RefWorks and, and other site, site This, I think, is another free online one. Zotero, I have found to be the most compatible to the way I work. One, because it can be used on multiple computers and it now syncs to itself, so it doesn't matter where you have it, it will show you what you've got. So at the Zotero.org site, I'm going to just type this in so it's in the record. Oops, that was a happy face. There you go. That is where you would go to download Zotero. And um, it's very easy to download and install on your computer. It has a lot of features. It will capture things automatically. Uh, some citation management tools, you have to enter every little tiny bit of piece of information into it. This will automatically capture it. It will remotely back up and sync your library. You can store actual PDFs so that wherever you go, you have access to the complete citation and the document. Um, you can get... Uh, a citation collaborator that works with Word or Open Access, Open Office, and I, I won't even read all these to you because there's just so many things that it will do. When you are in um, your Firefox, it shows up down here that you actually have the Zotero on your computer down in the lower right-hand corner. That tells you that it's loaded, it's ready for you to work, and, and just, just get going. Now, in the other browsers that Zotero now will work with, it used to only work in Firefox. It's now set up to work in Safari and Chrome. I understand it's not yet um, available for Internet Explorer, but I think they're working on it. And I see a question from CD. You have to download it for Firefox, but you can download the standalone version and use it with the other browsers. You can also download um, one that can go on your uh, flash drive. So you have choices about how you download it. Depends on how you want to use it. And you can download it on multiple computers. I have it on my work computer in case I run across anything um, that relates to research I'm doing, and I also have it on my home laptop. And then they sync to each other. It's very cool. All right. Right now, what I'd like you to do, if you are at all interested, is to download the entire presentation here of these slides, and here are the step-by-step -step instructions to do that. The reason I'm asking you to do that is that I've got a lot of slides that I'm not actually going to show to you tonight because I want to do an actual live demo. But if you save the slides as a whiteboard PDF, you can go back and see all of the different aspects that I've shown you in real time. So just take a moment to follow these instructions and then when you have down, done that or when you're finished, would you please raise your hand? And that's the little icon at the top of the participant list. It's the third icon over with the, with the hand. Um, just raise your hand and I'll know you're ready for me to go ahead. And if you choose not to download the whiteboard things, just um, put up your hand, too, so I know you are finished with this, so I can go ahead with the presentation. Yes, and definitely save in the whiteboard PDF. 
because you want to be able to look at these outside of um, a collaborate session in the in the next time you look at it. Okay, it looks like just about everybody's done, so I'm going to um, ask you to lower your hands. Oh, look at you all go. Ah! Okay. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is share my desktop. And hopefully what you see is that download page for Zotero. Can you give me a smile if that's what you see? All right, super. So this is where you would download. And um, again, like down at the bottom, here's where you know that you've got it. Now I'm going to open mine up just to show you what it looks like. And I'm going to open it actually all the way up. So you're seeing the entire screen. And I'm going to show you the different parts of Zotero so that you can, can see what I'm talking about. Over on the left, there's your library. And in that library is all of the items that you have saved. And you can divide them up into what are called different collections. It's just a file management system, basically. This will also tell you if you have any duplicate items, if you have things that are in more than one place, or if you have things you've saved but you haven't put them anywhere yet. And then, of course, the trash, anything you want to get rid of. In the middle, this middle section, is the list of what you have saved. And it gives the title, the creator, the author, a date. Um, you can make these bigger or wider, narrower, whatever you like to work with. And over here on the left is an icon that shows you what that item is. This one is a journal article. This one right here is a video recording. This one's a podcast. So you can, at a glance, see what these things are. These are web pages or things that I entered um, my own self. This is a blog post. Let's see, here is a report. So these little icons help tell you what it is you've saved. Over on the right section is actual information about each of the items. It tells you what type of item it is, the title, the authors, if there's more one or more. This is real cool. It includes the entire abstract, the journal that it came from, the volume issue, the pages it has. All of this shows up for you. The website that you received it from, the day that you accessed it. This is an important field for some citation styles when they want to know when did you access this and the date you added it. Some other things that happen here are notes. You can add a note about this item, and you can just say, oh, I like this about it. Do, 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 do. And then you have a note that stays with that item, and you can read that. That's one way when you're reading it and you want to take out a quote, for example. You could, you could put a quote into the note field and add what page it was on. So you can really do quite a bit with this. You can add tags to these if there are not any. So you can talk about what what is this about? And you can correlate it with something else. You can say, OK, this one is related to that one. And then if you go to that one, which is this one, it will say that it's related back to that one. So you can make connections. OK, I'm going to minimize this so we can take a look at what we're doing. OK, are there any questions at this point in time? I'm not really seeing the chat board because I am screen sharing my, um, my browser, and that's kind of my whole desktop. So are there any questions at this point that I need to know about? Uh, Margaret, there was a question from Walt asking, uh, does, does it add tags automatically? And that's a great question, Walt. I'm going to show you how that happens. And yes, it frequently does if there are tags on the journal article to begin with. So let's, I just grabbed um, an EBSCOhost base that 
we're going to database. I'm going to do a search here. Um, I'm going to search for library tutorials. OK, and that's going to come up with a number of items. Now, there's a couple of things you can do. Where your little icon is way up at the top in the URL, once you have Zotero into your browser, it's going to show you that there are items here. And you can either add a whole bunch of them at one time, or you can decide that, hmm, oh, I like this one. So you go into it. And you're into the abstract view, and it has subject headings. Now that you're in the abstract view, if you look up in the URL, there is a little document. And that's how you add this. Now, before we go to that, I'm going to backtrack a little bit and go back to my library down here on the bottom. And I am going to start a new collection. Where did it go? OK, there it is. And I want to do this uh, tutorials. That's what I'm going to research. OK, so now I'm in that. I'm over here back onto the database. And I'm going to click on that Add Item. And it should be adding the item. There it is. It shows up here, and it shows up over here. It's still saving because I think it's trying to save a PDF of it as well. Because if it can, it will try to do that. I'm going to wait until it's finished saving. And either I have a really small collection or something's. No. OK. So you see here, it is a journal article. So it knows that from the database. It already knows what it is. It has the entire title, the author, first and last name, the entire abstract, which is the same thing as on here, the publication, volume, all of those things. OK. Let's go to tags. You'll notice that the items that were up here and were actual subject headings for this journal article in the database end up being placed as tags. You can add your own. Um, and let's say, because we're doing, this is, we think, about tutorials. And we're going to add that. So we can search it any time by that. You can add as many tags as you want. OK. This did not, in this case, save the PDF for this. But it did. Um, if you're not on this web page anymore, and you're not in the database anymore, and you're just somewhere, you can still get to it by clicking here in Zotero, and it brings, you, brings it back up for you. Is that cool or what? OK. I'm going to go back to my list and add a couple other things. Ooh, I like this one. Video tutorials. I'm going to add that one. And again, up at the top, it has the little paper page. And though it, it's going to add this one to my Zotero. And I'm going to add several of them, because I want you to see what happens. Uh, oh. Faculty feedback on library tutorials. That's a good one. I'm going to wait till the paper comes up here, which says it knows what it is. And we're going to add that one. OK, so we now have three items. We can sort them by title, by creator, or by date. I'm going to sort them by creator. And let's take a look at what was saved. In this one, Access and Invest, Faculty Feedback, it did save a PDF of it. So whenever it is capable of doing it, it will do it. I'm not quite sure what defines if it's capable or not. You would think on all the times it had a PDF, it would save it. But obviously, as we see, it doesn't. OK. One thing you'll notice, I don't know if you guys have done much APA style 
um, citation. One of the things APA requires is that the title, only the first letter of the main title and the first letter of the subtitle is capitalized. This is the same no matter what um, citation management system you use. It will only pull in what the database has. So you have to make sure that when you decide what kind of style you want it in for references, you may have to do some correction. It doesn't do it automatically, OK? But I'm going to show you how to do this. If you click on, oh, no, let's save something else. I'm going to say here, here's a slide share. This is just a website presentation. And it has a different little icon up here. Let's add that. Oop, I added it twice. This will give you a, sna a snapshot. And you can always return to this, um, this particular place. Again, once you're not there anymore, it's going to probably show up under um, duplicate, too. So that's because I clicked it twice. Um, another thing that you can save is if this is like a web page. This is an online open access journal. It didn't come up with anything here, but if you go down to these icons here, you'll see that one of them says a create a new item from the current page. So if you have a website that does not provide anything up in the URL, you can still capture that page. It will say it's a web page and save it. Now, what I want to do is because this is an online journal, I want to actually change this so I can save the right things. Change it to a journal article. And then in this case, you're going to have to add some of the information. OK, and it doesn't have, it does have an abstract, so I can copy paste if I want to have this in my Zotero record. And the publication is Issues in Science and Technology Librarianship. Hmm, it's winter of 2010. It's not page because it's web based, so you put no page. This does not appear to have a volume number, but you might want to do some more um, research on that. OK. Here is another online journal. This has a web page icon. So we're going to add that, this first Monday article again. This isn't really a web page, so you'd want to go through and fix this so that it's a journal article and you save all the aspects of it that you need for a journal article. So it puts in all the items that you need to save. And here is a website. Again, there's not something to add there, so I'm going to add this one. I'm going to leave it saying that it is a web page, because this actually is a web page. OK, so now you have all of these things in Zotero. And right now, I'm going to stop screen sharing or pause screen sharing for a moment and get back and see if I can answer some questions. OK, Nancy, uh, it says it will download the full text version if possible. If it's in a PDF, it will not download the HTML. Um, the HTML has to stay there, but you'll always have a link to go back to it. it. OK, Nancy asked, if it doesn't add the full text version or the, the PDF, how do you get it? You can save the PDF to your desktop and then add it. Um, I'll show you how to do that in a moment. Um, and yes, you can use it for bookmarking. Wendy asks that. You can save websites on it. OK. I'm going to go back to this. 
and you're able to see again. Okay, let's go back to that one article that did not save the PDF. I'm going to go back there, and I'm going to save this PDF. It's going to download. And I'm going to save a copy of it onto my desktop. And I'll know it's just, I'm going to just leave it with that name. I'd probably rename it if it were me. OK. So now you would go here and right click that title and add an attachment. And you can attach a number of things. I'm going to attach the stored copy of the file if you want that PDF. It'll open up. I go to my desktop. I find that funny numbered thing I just downloaded. There it is. And then it is saved in Usotero. So hopefully that answered your question about if it doesn't automatically download, how do I get it there? OK? All right, the next thing I want to show you is in Word. Now, I don't use OpenOffice, but I know a lot of students do, and that's cool. It's a great, it's a great resource. So I'm going to just show you what it looks like in Microsoft Word. So let's say this is the paper I'm writing. And when you download the Word integration software, you'll end up with these under your add-ins. You'll have a little folder that's add-ins. And these each are different things. Now, this one says insert a citation. So you're writing your paper, and you want to insert a citation for this McClure et al. They wrote something in it that I'm talking about. So I'm going to put my cursor in that spot, click on Add Citation. And this is new. I, I'm not quite sure how I like this new feature. So I go back to Classic View. I want to see the titles of everything. OK, so let's say I want this particular journal. I'm referring to this one, even though that's not what I said. Um, because if I were quoting from it, I could add a page number. If I have already mentioned the author's name, I can suppress the author in the citation. And I'll show you the difference between that. So once you've done this, you click, and the citation is automatically added into your document. Now, because I already mentioned the author, different author, because I'm just doing a, a funny demonstration here, let's go back to that and try it again and not have the author's name included. So I'm going to suppress the author. But it is on tw page 23. So then it puts that citation right there for you. Isn't that cool? It really makes things very, very easy. Um, OK, so I'm going to put that down. and. Make this kind of, oops, nope, I want that to be large. I want to take the whole thing. Because I want to show you how to build a citation out of this is your list. You want, I'm going to take this duplicate out of here, uh, remove that one so I don't have a duplicate. OK. I now have this. This is what I have referred to in all of my paper. And I want to do a references list for this. So you would click on the folder, and then, excuse me, right click it and say create bibliography from the collection. This is where you can choose your style. And depending on what you're writing in, uh, we mostly use APA, but there are other disciplines. Some of you are in the sciences, and you might use MLA. You might use a, a number of others. Um, but this is APA 6th edition, so this is the newest one. You can save it in various ways. I like to copy it to a clipboard, so I say OK. Now, I'm going to go down to the very end, create a new page here, 
And I said to clipboard it, so I'm going to just paste it right here. And there it is. Now this is formatted in APA style, so it has a hanging indent. It's double spaced. It's perfect, except that one, we didn't clean up all the information in Zotero, and two, um, once you've chosen your style, you might have to do some various things. Like I know that these have to be lowercase. and so on. OK? Is that cool or what? I'm going to stop screen sharing right now and get back to you guys and see if there are any other questions you have. Oh, <laughs> CD, you must have been working on the paper. Yeah. Um, let me show you this slide. There are quite a few styles that are the default styles. Um, and you can pick any of them. You can also download very, very specifics, uh, specific styles that aren't the normal. But we kind of use MLA, we use APA, we use Chicago, which is like Turabian, um, but there are others that come naturally. OK, what's going on over here? Uh, Lauren asked if you would suggest using the APA cleanup prior to using it. That depends. If you are doing most of your research and writing for this master's program, you're probably going to be required to use APA style. So I would, yes, because then you know you can pull stuff and then not have to mess with it. Um, if you are going to be also writing um, for an English class in some other endeavor or for a business or whatever, you can clean it up when you use it. What's important, I think, is that you have all of the information, whether it's in correct format style or not. You have all the pieces. You have the title, the authors, even if there are six authors. Um, Put them all in there. Make sure you've got the journal title and the issue and the volume and all that stuff that every citation style is going to require. OK, I am not, Nancy's asking, and Walt are asking about Blue Book for legal citations. I'm not familiar with that. So that would be something you could look up on the Zotero website, Walt. There are um, a lot of, because it's an open access kind of deal, there's a great community involved with Zotero. And you can, uh, they have a great knowledge base. You can ask all kinds of questions and get uh, technical help and all that stuff. So some of that very specialty work you might want to ask them about. Um, can I specify case for that field as a rule for all references when it builds them? Um, I think, Nancy, I think what you're asking is can you set up Zotero to change what it's receiving from the database? Um, and it's not a setting. It's an individual cleanup uh, when you look at, yeah, you have to, you have to go to each uh, field and make sure it's right either in Zotero or on your reference list. So you still have to have that citation guide. You still have to um, deal with it. You know, um, we don't get away from that. By clean up, OK, Kimberly, let me go back to screen sharing. And I'm just going to show you. OK, let's look at this one. Let's say that you will want to clean this up for APA style. And I'm hoping everyone is seeing the, again, Zotero. So I know that APA style requires that these have to be in lowercase. So I'm cleaning up this record. And once I clean it up, it stays that way. 
when I export it, it even saves it that way over here. It saves it everywhere, everywhere within Zotero. So once it's cleaned up here, you can export it. But if you then do with, with another style that requires every proper noun to be capitalized, you'd have to change it again. So that's where my advice came from. It depends on if you're always using the same citation style or not. Um, again, let's take a look at this first Monday article. Now, I did not clean this up by, I have a snapshot of it, and let me go back there to that page. Uh, I'm going to put this down. So this is actually a journal article. I made it a journal article, but the title isn't First Monday. The title is Teaching and Learning with Digital Resources, WebWise 2005. So I would have to type that in here. Okay. So that's what I mean by cleaning up um, your pieces. OK. Um, what am I missing? Let's see. Instead of inserting the references via the clipboard. I don't, I'm not quite, Tony, if you have the one of restate that question or if you still have that question, let me get off the mic so you can ask it. I, uh, I was uh, just uh, noting there's, a, there's an, another f way of inserting your references into your paper um, rather than using the clipboard. Um, I've been using in the toolbar for Word, there's a little icon that is, I think it's called uh, Insert Bibliography. Uh, and if you do that on the last page of your paper, um, then Zotero will actively update every reference whenever you add a new citation or when you make a change in your main Zotero collection. It'll actively update everything. And then you can go back and forth and back and forth. And as your paper flows, the reference list will grow and grow. Um, and I found that amazing uh, on top of everything else Zotero does. Yeah, that's a great point, Tony. I had kind of forgotten about that because I haven't written a paper in the last two months, um, and I'd forgotten about that aspect of it. But um, if you'd like me to kind of demonstrate that, I can show that. But um, raise your hand or smile or something at me if you want me to show you how that works, what Tony's talking about. OK, I'm seeing faces. So I'm going to open up my Word document again. All right. What I did is did it by the clipboard. But let's say I'm going to make a new page. And up here, I have added a citation into the text. This one is to edit the citation I've put into the text. Here is Insert Bibliography. I think this is the tool that you were talking about, Tony. Oh, it only took one item. Oh, maybe that's the only thing I've cited in the paper. That's it. OK, so then that's the one we did up here when I first did it. So let me insert something here. And I'm going to insert this one. And I haven't talked about the author, so I'm going to leave the author in. I'm not going to suppress the author. And that's going to go in there, so Sparks 2010. And if I go back down to the bottom, like Tony said, it automatically added it. And if I go back to my Zotero and change it in Zotero, it's like it's synced from your paper to your Zotero database. Thank you for bringing that up, Tony. I had kind of forgotten about that feature, and it's a really powerful one. Um, Jody said, I haven't seen you save anything. Is everything saved automatically once you import it to Zotero? Yes, it is as far as either a link to it or whenever it can, it will save a PDF. You can also save a screenshot if it's an HTML web page or it just, it, it always saves a link to it so you can go back to it at any time. Um, 
Cynthia is saying, yeah, cleaning up citation it is a good skill. It's it's kind of a pain in the butt, but it is good to know uh, some of these major citation styles. Um, I'm going to just um, go off the mic for a moment and see if anybody else has any questions that have not yet been addressed. <coughs> yeah, I'm just going to jump in here real quick, Margaret. This is Frank. Um, there were a lot of uh, questions streaming by in the uh, chat window, and I was trying to keep track of them, but at a certain point, they were just coming out so fast. So if, if you do have a question that Margaret hasn't answered that you'd like to get answered, uh, go ahead and raise your hand like she just uh, recommended, and then you can just use the mic to ask your question. OK, Lisa, go ahead. You've got the mic. Lisa, if you click on the talk button up at the top under audio video, you will have the microphone. The microphone. OK, I had it. I must have lost it. Um, so I have trouble with um, Zotero capturing information about books. I end up having to type most of the information in, and I'm wondering if there's some trick with that that I'm missing. Unfortunately, it really depends on Zotero can only capture the metadata and the information that the website has to give you. Um, with certain um, OPACs, it can talk to Zotero. So if you are in your own library's OPAC and it happens to be able to talk to Zotero, and there would be a little icon up in that URL that says, oh, uh, Zotero recognizes that this is a book and it would import it as a book. If you're on something like Amazon or some other place, ALA, book publications or whatever, it may or may not be able to catch it. The way you can tell what Zotero recognizes is whether or not there is a specialty icon up in the URL. OK, CD? I have two questions, so I'm going to ask them quickly. If you have multiple authors, um, you said you have to put in each author. And I'm just wondering, when you go to sign it in the text, does it come up with the et al? Or do you have to change that? And then my second question is, where did you get the um, I guess it's like a toolbar uh, that has the tarot for Word. I, I didn't see how that happened, and it's not coming up on my Word, and I just downloaded the tarot. Two very great questions, CD. Let's see if I can remember what they were. No, I'm just kidding. Because um, <laughs> I haven't had dinner yet, which also means I haven't had my glass of wine yet. Um, the Word integration is a separate download. And if you go onto the Zotero site, um, there should be indications. I forget now because they've just put out a new version, and I downloaded it so long ago I've forgotten. But it's, um, it should, you should be able to find it without too much difficulty on the Zotero site. And it's another, it's a plug-in that you have to get for Word. Um, the other one that you mentioned was, Oh, here, yeah. OK, Diane has clicked in the URL. So that's perfect. Um, the other question is, when you import multiple authors, the different styles, in my understanding is that the, the different styles will say, OK, if there are three or more, it goes to et al. Sometimes it's four or more, it'll go to et al. So it depends on what style you choose. But yes, when you import it and there are multiple authors and that style says we only list the first plus at all, Zotero will do that in your, in your citation um, and in your reference list. Hopefully I answered those two questions. OK, Walt, did you have a question? Uh, yeah, in the past I have used um, EndNote, um, and I'm not very familiar with um, RefWorks. Um, are there distinct advantages that, or disadvantages that um, Zotero has over the other um, citation management programs? 
Thanks. Thanks, Walt. That's a great question. Um, it used to be, in the old days, um, your university or wherever you were going to school would subscribe to RefWorks or EndNotes. And as soon as you left there, in order to maintain access to it, you would have to purchase it or pay a fee to still be able to use it once you're out in the working world. I understand that there are now some universities and some capabilities that you can keep your access to those products after you graduate. I'm not entirely um, positive that I'm a real advocate for proprietary software. And so the fact that Zotero is open source and openly and freely available at all times, and you can download it any number of times to any number of computers, and it syncs and it's yours, to me, that's a huge advantage. I think that the last time I used RefWorks was a number of years ago. And I found it very, very cumbersome. And using Zotero, to me, has never been cumbersome. I sort of taught it to myself. And RefWorks, I had to go get instructional manuals and stuff. I just found it much more complex. Um, so it's, maybe it's a personal preference that I like free open source software. And I like how Zotero works. So hopefully that answers your question. Thank you. And Lauren, your hand is up. Yeah, um, I ran into this earlier today. I um, had created a snapshot off of a website. And in a different, um, I think it's Diego, if that's how you, D-I-I-G-O um, application, when I would um, be, create a snapshot of a website, I could actually highlight things, um, write notes on the side of the text. Um, I think I was even actually able to do that in PDF. And then I could save it. So um, when I went back to um, the uh, saved document, it already had my personal notes in the text. Um, I know that you have the notes that are um, tabbed for um, the work that you're saving. But I'm wondering if there's any capabilities in Sotero to actually comment within the text and then save that. Thanks so much, Margaret. You know what I love about these things is I always learn something new. No matter how much I think I know, I always learn from my, my classmates. You guys are great. I have never worked with that other software that you mentioned, Digo, Dingo, or whatever it is. And that's a very cool feature. Not knowing it existed anywhere else, I've never played with whether or not it's capable, uh, a capability that Zotero has. That would be worth playing with. I do know, though, that if you had, if you converted a website and saved a website picture into a PDF, and then opened the PDF and put your notes on it, you could then save it with all those notes on it to Zotero. I do know that that is a capability. Um, but it sounds like some more exploring could be done on that. Thank you. Uh, Nancy, you had a question? Yes, I just wanted to clarify. You said you could run it standalone. Uh, I, I'm assuming it, if you don't run it standalone, it's essentially just a plug into your browser. Could you clarify that for me? Yeah, they do have um, a standalone version that you can use with Chrome and with Safari. In um, Mozilla Firefox, it's built into the edge of your browser. It's right in your browser. The standalone would be like a separate product, but it will read your browser. Now, because, like I said, I'm kind of an open software sort of person, I've been using um, Firefox for a long time. I don't even touch Internet Explorer or anything else. So I haven't played with those, but it is a new capability. Um, I'm, so I can't show you exactly what that looks like. I wish I could demonstrate all of these different things, but um, I have my ePortfolio to write to. So I'm just trying to share what I've learned from my experience with Zotero. I bet you anything, you guys have had other experiences as well and with other software. Hopefully, this has been helpful to you um, and given you a resource that, that you can use. 
Thank you all for attending. This is wonderful. And I'm still open for questions. Um, we're not quite done. So if you do have another question, you can either type it into the chat box or I. Ah, there's a hand raised. Megan. I use Internet Explorer, and so I just downloaded the standalone, but I'm not quite sure how um, if any of those things that you showed, if I would be able to use that, or how if you know about the standalone version of Stisterra. Unfortunately, I do know that right now the standalone does not work with Internet Explorer. They're working on it, but it only works now with Chrome and Safari. So if you're an IE gal, it won't work right now. I would keep my eyes open because these things happen really quickly. Um, they decide that they're going to spread out to other browsers, and IE is a very solidly used browser. Um, a lot of people are going to want it, and so somebody's going to be working on it. Nancy, you had a question. Yes, since we're comparing, have you used OneNote, and how would you compare it to OneNote? I actually have never used OneNote, so I don't even want to guess. I've only used RefWorks in the past. My understanding is that EndNote is very similar to RefWorks, but they're both proprietary products, um, and I just I just can't speak. If there's anybody here that has used EndNote and wants to speak to what that looks like as compared to what I've been able to show you, um, the mic is open. Nancy, go ahead and take the mic. Well, from what I've seen of OneNote so far, um, using it now and then, essentially, it, it's more where, the way I use it anyway, you cut and paste things uh, from a website or a document, and then it, it pops it into uh, an entry, and you can put it in an organized list like you had there of uh, you know, a folder with your certain entries in it. Um, it'll uh, automatically put on the, uh, uh, if it's on the web, the website that you got it in. But it doesn't organize, from what I've seen, I, I've never known it to have a feature to organize all the metadata and certainly not to make citations. But then I haven't used it extensively. It just, but it's, it's kind of just, it's part of Microsoft Office now. And uh, it, it sort of lets you kind of keep your references to go back to together. Well, that's cool. And, and it's interesting. I mean, we, we all know this. We're working in a world where technology and what is available for us and where it resides changes on a daily basis. Who would have thunk that EndNote would have been bought by Microsoft or, or whatever? Who would have thought any of some of the mashups that have happened? So. To me, one of the things that is most important about the field we are in and entering is to kind of be willing to stay on top of things, to try new things, um, see what works for us. Um, it's, a, it's an ever-changing world. It's, it's never going to quite stay in one place. It's always a kind of a moving target. And we're out there, and we get to work with patrons who are probably very confused. So to me, it's a really important for us as, as librarians, wherever, wherever we end up, in whatever type of library we end up, is to understand the moving nature of technology and, um, and try to stay with it, you know? Um, Okay, it looks like people are saying that EndNote and OneNote are different things. Okay, so I understand that. That's cool. And thank you. Yes, I have done, <laughs> thank you, Jody. I have done several um, teaching things online, and I love doing it. And, and I hope you can tell that I enjoy it. And I'm really thankful that you are all here. I hope that it makes your studies better and easier and keeps you on top of things. That's, that's really the goal here. And I think that Frank wanted to maybe talk a little bit more about the student chapter of ACES. I'll get off the line for him. Yeah, I, uh, I, I was just going to make a few 
concluding remarks before we sign off. Um, looks like most of the pressing questions were answered, um, and we're down to the last couple minutes. So we'll go ahead and wrap it up now. So thank you very much, Margaret, for your excellent presentation. I, I see you've been getting lots of uh, good comments in the chat window there. Um, and thanks to all of you in the audience for attending. Um, we will be having uh, another event on March 14th, uh, our uh, faculty primetime event featuring faculty member Virginia Tucker, who will be giving a talk to the chapter. Uh, we'll send out an announcement about that uh, on SLOS admin, so keep an eye out for that. And it will be happening at 6 p.m. Pacific time like this one did. Uh, for those of you who haven't already, please consider joining the ACES student chapter um, as we have many exciting things planned for the spring semester and would love for you to join us. And if you are going to be around, I'm going to go ahead and plug this now. Um, if you're going to be, if you're early on in your SLIS career and you're going to be around uh, for another, at least another year after this semester ends, uh, we'll be electing uh, a bunch of new officers. Uh, the administrative term runs until the end of May, uh, and then we'll be looking for some officers um, to take up the slots of the people who will be leaving. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, definitely come check out the, uh, the chapter. We'll be having a business meeting on Wednesday, March 7th at 6 p.m., um, and that's open to anyone who wants to drop in and kind of see what's happening. And with that, uh, we'll call it uh, we'll call it a wrap. So thanks everyone for participating. Uh, okay, Walt's got a question. I'll go ahead and see uh, if he has a question about ACES since uh, I was just talking about that. Yes, I, I've noticed um, that the meetings always tend to be Wednesday night at 6, which is never a time that works for me. I'm just wondering if you've considered rotating the, the the date and time of meetings to maybe try to get more uh, people to be able to join and participate? Uh, you know, that's, uh, that's not a bad idea, Walt. Um, I, think, uh, I think part of the reason why we go with Wednesday evenings is just because, um, you know, we, we try to admit, we, we've tried to pick a time that's convenient for all the officers because we, we need at least officers to, to attend uh, the meetings. So that has been an evening that has worked well. Uh, but I will, Sarah's here in the, in the meeting, and we can certainly talk about whether that might be a possibility for future meetings to uh, consider holding them on different days so that folks who aren't officers but who are interested in attending could attend on those other days as well. Uh, thanks for that suggestion. OK, well, uh, I guess that pretty much wraps it up. So again, thanks, thanks everyone for attending. And uh, we'll hopefully see you guys at another meeting soon. Thank you.